today we're going to look at a nice problem that comes from the 2003 Swiss Math Olympiad. And I would say that the theme of this problem is symmetric polynomials, or really the restrictions put on a system when everything is symmetric. Okay, let's look at our problem. So given that we have x and y, which are real numbers, satisfying x plus y equals x cubed plus y cubed equals x to the fifth plus y to the fifth, what are the possible values of x plus y? And I would say like a little sub theme of this would be odd polynomials because all of these are odd in their variables. Okay, so maybe what might we do first? Well, I'd like to first notice that I can factor an x plus y out of x cubed plus y cubed and x to the fifth plus y to the fifth. So let's make that our first observation. So we have x cubed plus y cubed equals x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. So this is like a well-known factorization formula that is good to remember. It shows up in like calculus classes and stuff even. Okay, and then we also have x to the fifth plus y to the fifth with a similar factorization. So x plus y and then x to the fourth minus x cubed y plus x squared y squared minus xy cubed plus y to the fourth. So I think you can see the pattern there. Here we are decreasing powers of x while we increase powers of y, and then we're alternating signs. So now let's notice that each of these is equal to x plus y. Okay. So I think that would maybe bring us to try to cancel x plus y from both sides of the equation. But we can only do that when x plus y is non-zero. So I would maybe go up here and say case zero is the case when x plus y equals zero. Because if x plus y equals zero, then that means y is equal to negative x, and that means that x and y satisfy this whole equation here. Well, notice if x plus y is zero, then x cubed plus y cubed is zero, and x to the fifth plus y to the fifth is zero. So this is maybe like what we would call a very simple or trivial solution. Okay, so like I said, that's our case zero. And then actually while I'm at it, I notice that a bunch of x plus y's are going to be floating around. So let's maybe introduce some notation. So let's set x plus y equal to something. Let's set it equal to a. And I believe in the statement of the problem, they set this up already. But I didn't do it in our version, just as a reminder that you can introduce simplifying notation if you need to. Okay, so now back to our two equations. So let's take this first equation, and since x plus y is not equal to zero now, we can cancel it from both sides, leaving us with x squared minus xy plus y squared equals one. And then we can likewise do this to the other equation as well, leaving us with x to the fourth minus x cubed y plus x squared y squared minus xy cubed plus y to the fourth is equal to one. Okay, now where could we go from here? Well, I wanna use the fact that x plus y is equal to a and somehow get something involving x plus y here. And I can do it by squaring x plus y. So let's look at that. So if we take uh, a squared, which is equal to x plus y all squared, which foiling that out, that's x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. But let's notice that I've got an x squared plus y squared in this term up here as well. So let's rewrite that so that it has something that looks like this. And I can do that as follows. I can write this as x squared minus xy plus y squared plus 3xy. Because notice minus xy and 3xy combine together to give us 2xy. Okay, so now let's notice we could group these and just replace them with the number one. So let's do that. So we're replacing that with one and then let's solve for xy. So solving for xy, we will see that xy is equal to, let's see, 
a squared minus one over three. And now let's hang on to that for a second. Okay, and now we're gonna play the same kind of game over here, but I'll only start this calculation because it's gonna require a little bit more room. So we'd like to get an x to the fourth and a y to the fourth into this situation, and we can do this by taking x plus y all to the fourth. But recall that is named a to the fourth. So there we have x plus y all to the fourth. But then we can either multiply that out by hand or use binomial expansion formula to write that as x to the fourth plus four x cubed y plus six x squared y squared plus, let's see, four x y cubed plus y to the fourth. And now we're gonna play the exact same game. We'll re-express this so that it includes something like this line up here because we have a good handle on what that's equal to. Okay, so what is that gonna look like? Well, I'm just gonna rewrite this first. So this equals x to the fourth minus x cubed y plus x squared y squared minus x y cubed plus y to the fourth. But then I also have to include something to bring it back to this. So this is a minus x cubed y cubed. Here we have four of them. That means I need to add five of them back in. So that's gonna be five x cubed y plus, okay, I've got six of these here, only one here. That means I need five more of them. Five x squared y squared. Likewise, I've got negative x y cubed here. I've got four of them here. That means I need five of them. Five x y cubed. And now just quickly notice, if I combine these two, I get the line that's right above. Okay, but let's notice that we know all of this is also equal to the number one. And that's actually where we'll start the next board with a to the fourth equals one plus all of this. And we'll also bring this up as well. Okay, so this is where we ended on the last board. We introduced some notation, a is x plus y. We solved for x times y in terms of a, and we had this other equation. Furthermore, we had our first possible value of x plus y, which was zero. Okay, so now let's go from here. Let's notice that the last three terms in here have a common factor of five times xy. So let's factor that out. We get five times xy, and then left over will be x squared plus xy plus y squared. Now, notice I left myself a little gap there. That's because I'm gonna add and subtract something to make this simplify a little bit nicer. I'm gonna add another xy here and then subtract an xy there. But that allows me to take this term and factor it as x plus y quantity squared, which recall that that was a squared. And then furthermore, I can take each of these xy's and rewrite them with the formula that we derived on the last board. Okay, so let's do that. So this is gonna be equal to one plus, let's see, it'll be five over three times a squared minus one. And then it'll be, well, let's see, x plus y was a, we have that squared, so that's a squared minus Oh, that's gonna be another copy of a squared minus one over three. Okay, now we're gonna do a bit of manipulation. So I'll start by subtracting one from both sides of the equation. That'll leave me with, with a to the fourth minus one on the left. And then I'll also multiply both sides of the equation by nine. That'll cancel this three out here and this three here, as long as I multiply this by three. But then I also have to multiply this by nine. Okay, so that's gonna leave me with five times a squared minus one times, well this will now be three a squared minus a squared plus one. Okay, so again, we move this one over and we multiply both, uh, both sides by nine. Okay, next up I'd like to factor this left-hand side, leaving, leaving me with nine times a squared minus one times a squared plus one equals five a squared minus one. And let's see, what is that gonna be? It's gonna be three minus one, so that's two a squared plus one. Okay, and now we'll just acknowledge really quickly 
that a equals plus minus one is a solution. And that's because that'll zero out both sides of the equation. So let's add that to our list of possible solutions over here, plus minus one. But then we'll move forward with the setup if a is not equal to plus minus one. So in other words, we're gonna look for other solutions. But if a is not equal to plus minus one, that means we can divide a squared minus one from both sides of the equation. So let's see, that's gonna cancel this out, leaving us with nine a squared plus nine on the left. It'll cancel this out, leaving us with 10 a squared plus five on the right. Oh, but now we're really home free. So we can rearrange things and we'll be left with a squared equals four. But if a squared equals four, that means we have our final solution, which is a is plus minus two. And there we have it. We in total have five different solutions. Negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.